everyone. Today I am here to show you how to take in jeans. Now as always, this might differ if your jeans are slightly different, but this is just a general tutorial on how to take in a pair of jeans. Now we're going to do this from the center back. I've already tried these on and I am marking how much I want to take out. Um, I did this by trying them on and pinching them in like a folded manner at the back and marking. We don't want to take out from the sides because then you're dealing with the rivets and the pockets and all of that sort of thing. Plus there's no side seam usually on the waistband. So if you have any sort of big chunk that you need to take out, we are going to do it from the center back. Often there is a seam at that center back waistband and um, we are going to just snip it out of the center back. So I like to use a razor blade to remove my seams. And the first thing you need to do is remove that belt loop from the center back. Um, I find it easier to do this by um, ripping the stitches that are in between the underneath of the belt loop and the belt loop seam allowance. That way, in case you accidentally nick something, you aren't nicking anything super important. So we're going to get that belt loop, that top belt loop stitch off. If there are any tags or anything on the inside, you want to get those off as well. Just removing this tag here. And you'll notice that there is no center back seam on the inside waistband. So I'm going to mark that using the center back seam on the outside of the waistband as a reference. You could also use the center back seam of the actual pants as a reference if neither of your waistband pieces have a center back, but we do need to know where that center back is. Now removing the rest of the buttonhole and you can just buttonhole belt loop you can just set that aside pulling out all these extra stitches here and now we are going to undo the stitches that are connecting the waistband to the pants now you want to give yourself plenty of room to work with so I like to start um, several inches away from the amount that I'm taking in so I haven't marked both sides of the center back of what I'm taking in but right now I'm just kind of eyeing it and I'm removing those stitches that connect the waistband to the pants that is now disconnected and now we want to remove the stitches that connect the top of the waistband so for most ready-to-wear jeans this is just going to be a top stitching um, you also might just have a folded over waistband which is totally fine in that case you would treat this waistband piece all in one as it will be all in one but um, for this example we are going to need to separate those so again here these are just two pieces simply top stitched together. Your pieces might be top stitched and straight stitched, so you'll need to take out those extra stitches. Um, again, it's going to be different for various styles of jeans and pants. So opening all of that up. giving yourself plenty of room to work with here. And now we are going to need to mark onto the inside of the pants that mark that shows the amount we are taking in. You could do this before you remove the waistband as well if you want. Um, and we're going to be working with flat fell seams here. This was done on a machine in a factory, so you aren't going to be able to replicate these seams exactly. 
I'm just going to show you how I manage it for my personal use. So you're going to want to fold that in half, your back center back seam, and copy that mark so you have it on both sides of your jeans, really just the side you're going to be sewing on. And just to give a visual example here, I like to hold um, the seam as much as I can on the center. And you want a nice, even curve starting from the top of the waist going into the seat of the pants. So I just kind of eyeballed it to make that mark of where I wanted my seam to end, where I'm going to um, blend into the seat of the pants. And now I am opening up the first seam of that flat fell there. And let's speed this up a little bit. Okay, so that first stitch is all open and now we want to open up the second stitch. Now I'm gonna show you a little bit of magic here. Most jeans top stitching is done with a chain stitch. So that means if you open up just a few of the stitches at the beginning, you can pull out the whole rest of the stitch like so. And I'm gonna stop pulling um, where I made that mark because I don't wanna pull out the whole center back seam. And then you might have to do a test because it can only be pulled in one direction. So um, if it didn't pull out so easy going this way, I would have went to the other end of my seam and tried to pull it out that way. So I'm just gonna get out just the last few stitches at the top here. So anytime you need to take stitches out of ready to wear jeans, if it looks like a chain stitch, like it has top stitching on one side and has that sort of loopy looking stitch on the other, you can probably take them out in that manner. Okay, moving forward. So now that I'm able to lay this nice and flat, I am ready to stitch. I'm going to stitch down that center back starting from my mark and blending into the seat of the pants. I'm going to mark the inside of the waistband so that I can lay this seam flat and stitch a new center back seam there. Right, so you can see my mark where I transferred it to the inside. I'm just going to stitch straight across there and then the inner waistband piece where I didn't have a center back seam, I need to mark both my center back line and my taking in line. And I'm going to fold that piece on the center back line and stitch on my taking in line there. This is what you would do if you are taking in pants that do not have a center back seam at the waistband. You would need to mark that center back line and take it fold it there and take it in. So now you can see my stitch line. I have stitched and just blended into the seat of the pants. You wanna make sure that your yoke seams match nicely. Here I have folded at the inner waistband and stitched and on the outer waistband I have lined up, um, stitched parallel to the original center back seam. So now we want to put it back together. So I'm going to open up that fold so that it can lay flat. It's gonna go together much nicer. And on the original, the outer center back seam, I'm just gonna clip this just inside the original stitch line just to take out some of that bulk that we don't need anymore. And here I am going to serge that raw edge and then remove some of that bulk. Now you could do a flat fell um, as well, but I typically just serge it, especially if it's just for me and not a client. Um, you're not going to get as nice of a looking flat fell as the factory did. So. I see no problem in just surging that seam. 
and we want to do a mock of the original jean. So I'm going to top stitch, making sure that the seam allowance is folded in the right direction. I'm going to um, redo that top stitching on the center back. Now you're not going to get those nice ripples that it has from the wash that they do after the jeans are made in the factory, but you still want to get that top stitching. I'm going to top stitch the top of the waistband and I'm going to fold the bottom of the waistband under and stick that raw edge of those jeans back up inside the waistband and I am going to top stitch that bottom waistband seam being sure to catch the pants in on the inside. So top stitching the center back seam twice, top stitching the top of the waistband and top stitching the bottom of the waistband. And this is what it looks like when we're done. My top stitching is blue because that is what the original pants had. So you can't see it that great, but you can see that everything is nice and connected back together. That seam allowance is pressed towards the side that the top stitching is and it's all caught underneath with the top stitching. Pulling out all of my random missed threads here. And now it's time to reattach our belt loop. I'm just going to top stitch using a bar tack in the same spot that it was before. And here we are. My jeans are all taken in and I will be able to wear them much more comfortably now. Sometimes I reattach the tag, sometimes I don't. That's totally up to you. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to clip all your threads. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something today. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if there are any other tutorials you would like to see in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos by clicking this button right here. And you can check out my other tutorials in my tutorial playlist right here. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.